Hello everyone, we're back here in our eight previous classes we've seen how the basic concepts of free and residual phases are, uh, are happening in porous medium okay? from now on we're going to look into some of those uh, to help into further detail understanding the relationships in a, in, in a soil it's not an easy subject and as I recommended before I want you to take a close look at these videos over and over again okay so today this is our second uh, lecture and you have to a series of videos that you have to watch first I'll have a teaser just like I've, I've used before in our class and I'll show you here residual phase gasoline droplet and variation of interfacial tension Take a look at this drawing here. We have gasoline residues. See, this is the pore, a pore here, a pore here, channels connecting the pores, channels connecting the pores. This is a regular 2D uh, porous medium. Okay? And we created residues here by having gasoline invading and then water invading later. Since water is the wetting fluid, what we ended up having was residual gasoline phase left behind. As we see here in this drawing, we have a gasoline here. And you can get a better uh, information on that if you read my PhD thesis. It's all written there and is in our references from our previous classes, which are, are used in this one as well. Okay, my PhD thesis was in water long ago. Well, then, we have gasoline here, right? What we're going to do is, after it's flooded with water, we're going to introduce ethanol. Ethanol was used because ethanol became uh, an option of a renewable energy source. You can use ethanol and produce from, from, uh, from vegetables like in Brazil sugar cane and U.S. from corn. Now we have possibilities of creating ethanol from, from some other celluloses or different kind of material that will become uh, available in the near future by technology. Well, as you use that in a soil, as you have a spill of ethanol, and the idea here was using ethanol as a, a flush. Take a look. I will repeat that. We use ethanol as a flush to make gasoline. Look, when gasoline removes. So, ethanol entered through here. Since gasoline here blocked the pores, right? Ethanol had to flow to this direction here, and we also had ethanol flowing here. The interesting thing that you have to pay good attention is that what myself, when I was developing this experiment, I thought that ethanol will dissolve gasoline and pushes gasoline to that direction since that was the direction of flow but what we've seen is that actually gasoline moved towards the region where ethanol was flowing that's interesting isn't it and why that happened see gasoline instead of moving to that direction it was like coming towards the flow that for me is counterintuitive and if it is for you, you learn through this course so gasoline comes towards the flow and I would like to see why that happened take a look gasoline residual when you have only water in a porous media it has a constant interfacial tension right? As ethanol flush, as you add ethanol to, to displace this gasoline, as ethanol reaches the residual, you see, observe that the mainstream, observe that the mainstream flow passes by the side of the droplet. What happens is that ethanol partitions towards the gasoline phase. I call gasoline phase and you understand soon why is that. As ethanol partitions to gasoline, you see, you have, if you have a droplet of gasoline there and ethanol is touching from one side here, 
ethanol is closer here than it is here. What happens is that it, it reduces, it decreases the interfacial tension, right, of the, the droplet of gasoline. When I was thinking of my experiment, and probably, probably when you were thinking first of that, as ethanol would reach the gasoline phase, it would decrease the interfacial tension, and I, as it decreased the interfacial tensions, the tension, the droplet looks like it's softer, right? Because the tension is, is slower, is smoother, so you can push it towards the smaller pore. What prevents it to enter a, a smaller pore is it, its interfacial tension. If we reduce it, you can push it and you can remobilize it by making it mobile again. If you know, and you should from previous classes, uh, residual phase is not mobile. What we're trying to do with uh, introducing ethanol, it's decreasing interfacial tension to remobilize it. So as the, the droplet becomes softer, it goes towards the, the smaller pore. Well, that is quite interesting because uh, when we have the interfacial tension working in that droplet first, it doesn't happen like the whole surface is decreasing uh, homogeneously. And that's the key to understand, to understand what's happening there. Well, let's take a close look at uh, interfacial tension here. When we have uh, a third immiscible fluid, right, we'll have a different uh, interfacial tension. I'll show you that in a spill in the ocean. Well, let's think of free phase gasoline here. What would happen with free phase gasoline? I will, will get ethanol to show you that. This is a bit complicated, but we're going to go into detail. Look, this is a cross-section of exper an experiment where we had ethanol uh, flushing coming from this side to the left. So we injected ethanol here to remove gasoline residuals. Let's see, let's see what happens. I, want, I will show you the details of ethanol in our next class and you understand why the gasoline uh, residual flow towards the, the ethanol and not pushed by ethanol as we first understood. Thank you.